Hello and welcome to our online class, specially organized by School Media Edufest.ng. Okay, we're looking at Introduction to Nutrient Cycling in Nature with Lawal Abdul Razak. Okay, by the end of this class, here's what you should have an understanding of organic matter, inorganic matter production, mineral nutrients, carbon cycle, sulfur cycle, nitrogen cycle, and water cycle. So let's get ahead of this. Now, introduction to nutrient cycling in nature. A nutrient cycle or ecological recycling is the movement and exchange of organic and inorganic matter back into the production of matter we understand that energy flow is a unidirectional and non-cyclic pathway whereas the movement of minerals mineral nutrients is cyclic in other words the movement of nutrients in nature follows a cycle that is, they are not destroyed, they are just converted from one form to another. The mineral cycle include the carbon cycle, sulfur cycle, nitrogen cycle, water cycle, phosphorus cycle, oxygen cycle, amongst others that continually recycle along with other mineral nutrients in productive ecological nutrition. So it is quite important that you understand that. Now let's take a look at organic matter. Organic matter actually refers to the large source of carbon-based compounds. I repeat, the large source of carbon-based compounds found within natural and engineered terrestrial and aquatic environments. So in other words, it is matter composed of organic compounds that have come from the remains of organisms such as plants and animals and their waste products in the environment. These are carbon-based compounds that are usually gotten from the remains of plants and animals majorly. So they exist in natural form. While inorganic compound or matter is typically a chemical compound that lacks carbon hydrogen bond that is a compound that is not an organic compound such as carbon monoxide carbon dioxide carbonates and cyanides etc however the distinction is not clearly defined and agreed upon and authorities are differing that is authorities have not settled yet on which view to take as regarding inorganic matter but you must take note of that they may contain carbon, but they don't have carbon compounds, so they exist in isolation. So that is inorganic matter. Now let's continue with production in the ecosystem. It is important to know this as part of the cycles that we're talking about today. In ecological system, Production actually refers to the rate of generation of biomass in an ecosystem. It is usually expressed in units of mass per unit surface per unit time. For instance, grams per square meter per day. The mass unit may relate to dry matter or to the mass of carbon generated. To mineral nutrient, in the context of nutrition, a mineral is a chemical element required as an essential nutrient by organisms to perform functions necessary for life. However, the four major structural elements in the human body to weigh are usually not included in list of major nutrient minerals. So you must take note of that. These four elements are oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon, and nitrogen. They usually compose a majority 
of our body mass. So it's not listed as one of the major nutrients, minerals. Okay, furthermore, to carbon cycle. We're going to start a series of carbon cycle. We go over to the other cycles that exist in nature. The carbon cycle is the biogeochemical cycle by which carbon is exchanged among the biosphere, pedosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere of the Earth. It is simply the way in which carbon is used on Earth. So, the cycle that shows how carbon is utilized by nature. That is what carbon cycle is all about. Carbon is the main component of biological compounds as well as a major component of many minerals such as limestone. So below is a diagram for the carbon cycle. You could take a study of that and check other materials so that you could have a broader understanding of what the carbon cycle is. Sulfur cycle is the collection of processes by which sulfur moves between rocks, waterways, and living systems. Such biogeochemical cycles are important in geology because they affect many minerals. Biogeochemical cycles are also important for life because sulfur is an essential element, being a constituent of many proteins and cofactors and so for compound can be used as reductant in microbial respiration so it's very important that sulfur is part of the earth's crust you must have to understand the processes in which sulfur is being utilized on earth next is the nitrogen cycle this is the biochemical cycle by which nitrogen is converted into multiple chemical forms as it circulates among atmosphere, terrestrial, and marine ecosystem, the conversion of nitrogen can be carried out through biological and physical processes. Below is the diagram for how nitrogen is being converted from one form to another, that is from the atmospheric to the soil, into plants, and ammonification, nitrification, assimilation, and all that. So it is converted from one form to another. It tells you how nitrogen circulates in the ecosystem. And lastly, in our circles, you have water cycle. The water cycle is also known as hydrologic cycle. It describes the continuous movement of water on Earth. Water cycle actually involves the process of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, infiltration and surface runoff of water all these are processes that water goes through it also involves the exchange of energy with lead, which leads to temperature changes so when water evaporates it takes up energy from its surrounding and cools the environment and when it condenses guess what it releases energy and warms the environment it is quite important that you know this. Water cycle is one of the simplest cycle that you could have an understanding of. Below is a diagram. We have the condensation process, evaporation, precipitation, infiltration, and the other runoff, water runoff on the surface, the lands and rocks, and so on and so forth. So that is the water cycle and the quick glass. In summary, there are more than 100 chemical elements on Earth, and only 6 of the 16 lightest elements, that is hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur, play a major role in the metabolism of living organisms. Also note that there is also a phosphorus cycle. So we're going to treat that in the subsequent classes. Furthermore, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen dominate the chemistry of biosphere and make about 99% of world biomass. So that's that 
for nutrient cycling. Here is your assignment for the day. We'll get, make sure you get back to us with your answers. Thank you.